Hey guys, I am Daisho and I am here with Daisho's Playbook episode on Quenchable Fire. And this one is pretty good. I like I like this deck. I've always liked it since it came out. I always thought it was the best deck. And since the new releases came out, it doesn't seem like people really play it. It doesn't really seem like people think it's OP. But I still refrain from playing it. I don't know why. But anyway, the way I have it set up, there's really, I think there's two ways to run it at this point. You can either run it as a direct damage deck and you just want to send all the burn straight to their face and uh, only use it to remove creatures when you have to or when it's like a Chandra's Outrage, Flame Junkavu, or Flame Slash because all those go straight to creatures anyway. Or you can run it the way I run it, which is just have a uh, have it to all the burn to destroy the creatures and then your deck is really winning by swinging in with uh with your bombs or even your your weaker creatures so anyway let's let's get right into it bane fire is a burn spell um you can do it to the face if you need to win i, al I almost never do it to the face unless i have a kill fiend out or if it's going to win me the game um in general i just try to kill a creature with it same with blaze it's basically the same card except bane fire if you do five or more can't be countered so that's pretty cool Flamekin Brawler gets plus one plus O oh if you tap one. So the way I use this guy is I just I you I spend him as a kill card. If he gets damage through, I'm happy. But in general, he, uh, all these cards with fire breathing, which is what it's called when you uh, tap one to give it plus one plus O. Oh, all these cards with fire breathing, they have really uh, small toughness so it's it's a zero two so anything with a two or more toughness will kill it so i basically just use this as another creature burn spell as in if they swing in i'll block and kill it if i swing in and they block then i'll kill their creatures and then i'm really happy flame slash is just four damage to a creature it's really nice one drop gets rid of a creature i love it uh it doesn't give you card advantage or anything but it's definitely really useful i'm like i'm trying to focus on this but the giants are playing right now and uh not too happy they're playing against the packers who are undefeated so even if you don't watch football then i think you you understand how important it is for the the giants to win this game they're just getting they're getting kind of destroyed but they're playing really well so anyway whatever back to this goblin arsonist um, it's a 1-1 one, one when it dies you can deal one damage to target creature or player so he's very versatile any any time they have a creature that they want to survive um, that has one or one toughness they basically just can't swing in if you got if you leave this guy back to block or you they can't block so he's basically like a free damage every turn so he's a really useful card and uh, he's pretty versatile so I like him and uh, definitely keep him in the deck incinerate is one of the best cards in the deck unfortunately they didn't give this deck lightning bolt that would make it like kind of broken but Incinerate's really cool because it destroys batman and destroys cuddle troll cuddle troll isn't really such a big deal but batman is pretty cool because uh, it can't be regenerated and it's also just a two cost instant that does three damage that's amazing kiln fiend is pretty much the best way to win quickly with this deck in general it's gonna last long it's gonna last long it's gonna last a long time but if you get Kill and Fiend out early, and then you can basically just use your burn to keep killing their creatures as they play them, then you can kill them pretty quickly, and it's nice. Uh, Punishing Fire is really interesting. Deals 2 damage to a target creature or player. Whenever they gain life, you can get it back. So it can basically just keep killing their cards, and that's really, really, really nice. So I, I actually I really like this card in the deck, especially with uh, for March to War. It'll do really, really well against that. Damn it, they just scored it. Oh, wow, he just dropped it? Or... No, that was a touchdown. That's unfortunate. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, Punishing Fire is a two-cost instant. Also, it does two damage, so that's already good enough to be in this deck because it's not so... Like, there aren't so many good burn cards or whatever, but just the fact that it also it also has that gain life thing, especially if you're playing against March to War where they gain so much life, then it's really, really beneficial. Pyroclasm deals two damage to each creature. It's really nice. It can give you a card advantage if they have, like, three or four creatures out or whatever and they all have less than two toughness, then you can just kill them all. And just be wary because it'll basically kill all of your guys anyway because um, everyone except for the big creatures has less than three toughness, so it's not that good. Volcanic Hammer is just, it's like the staple card of this deck. A lot of decks have staple cards, like uh, Machinations is Ethereum Sculptor, and this one's Volcanic Hammer. And this one, it'll, it just does whatever you need it to do whenever you need it to do it. It'll get rid of their creature, it'll pump Kiln Fiend, it'll deal the last three damage that you need. It's just really good to run all four of them. Chandra's Phoenix is absolutely amazing this card is so good flying haste whenever red sor instant or sorcery you control deals damage to an opponent return it to your hand so it's a 2-2 flying haste which is basically sky knight legionnaire from march to war um, basically it's the same thing except this one you can also get it back so even if they kill it if they have to chump block it or whatever then you can just go get it back and then use it again it's really really nice 
I run all these fiery hellhounds. You don't really need to. I, I just like them because I view them as more kill cards. I just leave them on the battlefield, and if they swing in, then I'll just block, pump, and kill it. So it works out pretty well. It can basically just take out any creature in the game that doesn't fly. Uh, Pir Prodigal Pyromancer is... Um, it's pretty interesting because if you're playing against a deck that has a lot of one toughness creatures that they want to survive like some machinations has is to steal overseers so once you get this card out or if they play electrode or whatever then there's really nothing they can do i mean not there's not nothing they can do they can just remove it but um they have to deal with this card before they they really get going so it's outstanding volcanic fallout's really really nice because it can't be countered so um it'll work really well against um, realm. Sometimes it'll be able to clear their board if they've got a couple of Grizzle Blues, Krovkin Mist, and Lord of the Unreal. Then it'll just basically just wipe everyone out and it'll do a lot of damage. It does two damage to each player too, which is sometimes useful, sometimes detrimental, but in general it's not it's not too big of a difference between that and Pyroclasm. So I like them both. But uh, Shandra's Outrage is really good because it's an instant. It deals four damage to target creature, so uh, that's not very good for four mana, but it also deals two damage to the controller, so it's not great, but it works, and it's definitely going to go in the deck because it deals four damage to target creatures, so it'll kill those cards that you won't be able to kill with Volcammer or Incinerate, and uh, that's one thing that's really useful. Flank Down Kavu is actually, it's probably one of the best cards in the deck because it's a 4-2 creature, plus it deals four damage to target creature when it comes into the battlefield, so it'll kill a guy when it comes into the battlefield, and then it also... Uh, it's also a 4-2, so it can kill another guy later. But, oh, wow. That was not a touchdown. He never had possession of the ball, but the Giants don't have any challenges left. So, oh, wow. Are they reviewing the play anyway? That's weird. That must be a new rule. Sorry, I keep... I should I should not have done this. I should have just waited until the game was over. Anyway, this is probably the most thing that got, you guys are going to be like, Daisho, you're so stupid. Why do you have that card in your deck? I hate you. Oh, wow. They they reviewed it, and they left, they left it there. That's weird. Okay. That's the last time. I'm not even going to look at that. In fact, I'm going to just turn this game off. Bam! Power button. Off. Now I can't yell. I mean, I can't talk to you guys about football. Fire Elemental. This guy is a 5-4. And that's it. And <laughs> he costs 5 mana. So obviously he's not a good creature. He's just not. There's no way that anyone would argue that he's a good creature. 5 cost 5-4 five, is not good. It's not terrible, but it's not good. The reason why it's in the deck is because... Pretty much every card up until now, except for Kiln Fiend and Chandra's Phoenix, was about killing their creatures. So the first five, six, seven turns of the game, I'm just killing their creatures, and I'm not really doing much damage to their face. So then, once they have no creatures left, I'm like, Fire Elemental, and then now, I actually have a creature. I just swing in with him a couple of times, and then the game's over. It forces them to have to deal with this creature, if they have any creature removal. So... Fire Mental is pretty good because it deals with creatures. Uh, Fire Servant. Actually, I'll be right back. Hold on. Just pause. Unpause. Okay, Fire Servant is really good. It's an, it's basically this card, Fire Ser uh, Fire Elemental, and to the right of it, um, they basically just win you the game. So when you play this guy, all your stuff does twice as much. Chandra's Outrage will do four to them. Basically, just means that you can kill whatever they whatever you want. And like if you've got a Volcammer, it'll deal six damage. So plus he's just a four three. So he usually works out. I mean, he's not my favorite card, and he's definitely not the card that I would really love in this build. In other builds, it's way better. Like with Flame Rift, it's nuts. But anyway, fl uh, Flame Blast Dragon is awesome. He just wins you the game if they don't deal with it. He, they have like two turns because he's a six drop. So the next turn he's swinging in for at least ten. I mean, well, he can swing in for 10, guaranteed, basically. You might want to just take out one of their creatures with Flame Blast's ability, but it's pretty awesome. And Inferno Titan, I don't even think I need to explain to you why Inferno Titan's in the deck. He's just a beast and a legend. So now let's go into the cards that I didn't put in the deck. Cinderwall is really, really bad. It, I mean, it's not really bad, because it, it prevents them from swinging in with creatures that they don't want to lose. But if they want to lose a creature, then you can just basically trade. So it's not the worst card. It really isn't, because it could be just a one-cost kill card. Or it could just be a one-cost prevention card, I guess, prevent them from swinging in, but I don't like to run it. Dragon's Claw is kind of useless. It's not helping the way the deck runs at all, so I don't run it. Flame Rift is really, really good if you're running the direct damage build because it's two costs to deal four damage, so that can be really, really clutch, especially if you got Kiln Fiends out because it'll pump that. Then you can swing in for a bunch. So two costs for four damage is really, really hard. The only problem is it also does it to you. But in general, if you're running the burn style, then you can you can wait and use this and like just to be the final damage, and then you'll win that way. 
Goblin Warpaint is kind of stupid. Like, it's I don't really know why they put it in the deck. It's really useful if you put it on like a Kiln Fiend, because if you give that thing four toughness, then it's really good. But I just don't think that it's worth it. They can just bounce it, especially with all the bounce going on. If they remove it, then then you get two for one. It's just enchantments aren't that good, and it's not too good of an, an enchantment that I would like to put it in. Like an enchantment that gives haste is really stupid because you have to pay for the creature. So let's say I pay for Kiln Fiend, and I have to pay for this. So that means that I can't play my Kiln Fiend turn turn four. So. It's kind of kind of interesting. Sizzle obviously would go in if you're playing the direct damage style because it does it just does damage to an opponent. I don't run it because it doesn't kill creatures. Wheel of Fortune is really really an interesting card. You guys are probably gonna get on me and be like, "I show you should run this card. It's the best." So um, this card, everybody discards and draws seven. So what what the the good situation is when you've used all your cards already and they have like five in hand still, and then you get them to discard five and um, we you each draw seven, so that's just absolutely amazing for you. It it almost always works out. I mean, <laughs> it almost always works out well because in, in that situation when they have five cards, but then there's also the situations where you're playing against Realm and then they already have mana open and then they just counter whatever they need and then they just play their guys and you can't do anything about it. So I don't like it because it gives my other guys more cards, even though. Um, I get to choose when to use it. I still don't really like it. Relentless Assault's useless. I, I I never have more than a couple of creatures. It just says untap all creatures that attacked after this main phase. There's an like additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. Um, Lava Axe is five damage for five. Uh, I mean five costs for five damage. So it's not very good unless you're uh, really just trying to just knock them down that last little bit. So I'd rather run f a Lava Axes than I mean Fire Elementals than a Lava Axe because Lava Axe is five damage once, and Fire Elemental is like it can keep swinging in for five, and the board's probably going to be clear because that's what this deck does. And then um, these last <laughs> these last four cards are just too expensive. Um, they're they're all pretty good actually, but not for their cost. So Flame Wave is interesting. It deals four damage to a player and each creature it controls. So if you get it off, then they've probably lost because you'll basically just kill their whole side. But it's only useful when they have a lot of creatures. And the whole point of this deck is to make sure that they don't get a lot of creatures out. So I don't like that. Insurrection is is also it would be really good if they had a lot of creatures out. Then you can just play this card, and then you basically just win the game because you just swing in with all their creatures. They obviously have no blockers, and you can swing in with your creatures too. So then that's also winning the game. But you have to get to eight mana, and like getting to six mana, while it, it's usually not such a big deal, but getting to eight is kind of rough. I don't know, you could do it sometimes. And then there's Emperor Shot, which, I mean, just reading reading the text, instant speed deals three damage to target creature or player, and it cycles itself. You draw a card. That's pretty good. That should be, I mean, I would pay four for that. I would pay two and two reds for that. I would pay one and three reds for that. But the fact, <laughs> the fact that it costs seven is really just laughable. So anyway, this is how I run the deck. I run it as a creature destruction and then uh, swing in. All my creatures are basically in here. All my low-cost creatures are basically in here to just get rid of their creatures, remove them, and uh, and that and that's the way I, that's the way I run this deck. So now I'm just gonna jump into a ranked match here. And wow, there's a lot of games up. That's pretty cool. And uh, we're playing against Mr. Apophnia or something like that. I I think that's probably how you pronounce it. Apophnia? I don't know. I've never heard of that word before. But um, anyway, so I, I'm going to run this unquenchable deck, and hopefully it'll do well. So far, I've I've had I've had some luck with these Dice Show's playbooks, and I've actually won all the ones that I've started with. Huh. This is an interesting hand, because I've got, I've got the Goblin Arsonist. I play first. I got Volcanic Fallout. If I draw, I have all the lands that I need. If I draw anything decent, then I'm fine. Um, I think I'm going to keep it just to see how it will run, because Volcanic Fallout could really help me, depending on what deck he's playing, because it could just do a ton of damage. Um, it could, like, kill all his guys, plus I can now kill somebody with which has three toughness, because it'll end up killing my Goblin Arsonist, too. So, um, I'll get off to a nice little start with my Goblin Arsonist, and this should be good. If he's playing, uh, if he's playing Elves, then I am just absolutely set. Um, not happy to see that land, though. I would love to see some spells because um i don't know keeping with five lands is usually not a good idea especially when you get a free mulligan so don't take this as intelligence i just really like the cards that i saw and i see two greens so all right that's good that's perfect because i do have volcanic fallout so um i can i can wait all right i can wait a little bit before i play volcanic fallout so i can't play volk hammer because uh, his creature 
has hexproof, so that's interesting. But I have volcanic fallout, so this should be good. Because hopefully he doesn't play, uh, hopefully he plays something like lifelink or something. Or, uh, I don't know, rancor would be nice right now. Is he running like a mono green deck? There we go, rancor. That's how we do it. Um, I want to wait as long as I can. I want to milk this guy for all that he's got. Fists of the Ironwood, perfect. Um, although maybe I should do it right now. I don't know. Maybe I should wait. Yeah, I'll wait until next turn. I'll take another three. Um, that way I can wait until next turn. Um, and yeah, so there's no point in swinging in. Well, there is a point in swinging in because if he doesn't block, then I'm happy. And he might not block because my Goblin Arsonist would kill two guys. So I don't really care about taking the three damage here. Um, land, of course. But now I'm going to get to kill another card of his. I, don't, I really I just don't care about Goblin Arsonist because he's going to die anyway next turn. So hopefully he won't block. I mean, yeah, there we go. He doesn't block. He doesn't want to lose all his guys. He's like, cool, now I can swing in. I'll be happy, man. But hopefully before, he's going to play freaking Enchantment of Sorts. Gnarled 2! Uh, perfect, because once the freaking 3-1 goes away, then everything dies. Alright, um, do I want to milk this a little bit more? Um, I can take 5 here. Ooh, this is rough. No, I think I'm, I'm just going to do it now. I think I should have waited, but, um, just get everyone out of here. Deal one more damage to you. Volcanic Fallout for the motherfucking win. I should have waited. If I had waited, then I would be at 12, and then once I have Volcanic Fallout, I'm at 10, so I guess I don't love that. But hopefully... Ah, but he's got five cards in hand. Oh, he got Rancor back, I suppose. That's not too big of a deal. Ah, damn it, and all I have is Volcanic Hammer, because I'm drawing lands for days. I don't know, I drew three lands, that's not such a big deal. Alright, and he doesn't even have anything, because all he had was green mana. He thought he was set with what he had. Alright, more lands, whatever, we're both getting land screwed. <laughs> um, I'm getting land screwed in the opposite way, so all I really need to do is just draw Flamey Bait. Or, uh, there we go, he's got the, he's got the white. Nope, nothing. Nothing! Nothing! You got nothing for me, bro. Alright, let me do this. Yes! Fiery Hellhound. You're a little bit late, but, uh, you still get a pass. Are gonna let you in. Okay, so now what I need is I need him to play something that's not Sacred Wolf, and um, then I can kill it. He'll probably put Rancor on it if he if he drew a creature, or I mean he's gotta have drawn something because otherwise he would just be passing turn. So maybe he did draw the white. I don't know. Maybe ah, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is an interesting game. I do like this matchup. It's definitely in my uh, favor, but that. That Volcanic Fallout, it was interesting. It, it got rid of three of his cards for two of mine, because I also got rid of my Goblin Arsonist, I guess. Um, so that's not that's not too bad, but... Um, wow, Flame Tonkavu. Why would he throw that away? Because I guess because it, it costs two white, so that's it. Um, but, uh, yeah, you don't really have any instants, do you, sir? We'll swing in for ten, take you down to four. And I'm pretty sure that this game is over, because no matter what he does, he's kind of screwed. So, I don't know. I feel bad just posting this as the gameplay, because he gets mana screwed. Like, that happens so often that they get mana screwed. So, I mean, I was definitely going to win that game the next turn. But um, it happens so often that they get mana screwed. But um, you, got, you just got to choose the right hand, man. I mean, you can't start a hand if you don't have white mana. And I, he, it's not like he didn't play any threats. I just killed them all. So... Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that game, and have a nice day. Bye.